Did you join our group already? No, I haven't joined up yet. That's the workshop. No, 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 I mean, uh... Silhouette, did you join? Uh, how do you mean join what group? Like, like our server, Arcane I mean. is with... Yeah, yeah Arcane's under... Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's Ruckus. Okay, so. Sick. Sick. <laughs> Groovy. Uh, that's way better, dude. I like that. <laughs> should I? Should I? I actually don't. But um, <laughs> should I? Terrible. Should I wait for you guys to all join, or should we just go ahead and get started? Uh, wait for you me. You can run up there. Okay. Dude, my daughter is playing this. She's going to be 11 in, in February. And she keeps getting scared every time there's a big monster. <laughs> <laughs> so she just, the, the slug, it's out in the swamplands, whatever that one's called. Uh, she just just exited the whole quest because she's like, nope, not gonna fight it without my dad. <laughs> so, so she's just Good luck. running around harvesting instead of uh, fighting it. So only if you eat right there and then just go out the city gate, then you can run around and run from monsters and you can keep playing. Okay. Alright. Hayes, are you... Or, yeah, I'm coming, I was eating. Oh, I forget, you can hit start and skip the animation. Okay. I'll be there shortly. Uh, do you want us to wait for you? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm running out to click on the quest board right now. Load. Load. Talk to the hammer. I uh, have enjoyed the past two times that you guys have talked about theology and Bible and all this stuff. Um, because you guys bring you bring a different aspect than anything. I've, I've dealt with because you guys come from this uh, like intellectually no this is this is this is this and you even the conversation yesterday in, involving like how uh, like uh, alternative lifestyles view things and different things like this and my job is is to do those things is to communicate that but I, I don't ever communicate it these way, the ways that you guys are talking about it because the congregation that I talk to doesn't talk like that, you know what I mean? And so when you guys talk like this, I'm just like eating it up. I love nice. it, so. <laughs> I, I like um, talking with you guys because it's, you know, three, now four people who have different understandings and different views and, and sort of different intelligences you know i understand things that jared doesn't understand he understands mm -hmm. things that i don't understand yeah and so yeah. we have different views but but like nobody's stupid you know because there yeah. are a lot of times where i have conversations with people and because the barrier isn't just being different it's you know, stupidity. In a, in a different, yeah, in a different <laughs> sense of understanding. It's the fact they're that they're just kind of dumb. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know, dude. That... There's a lady that told me this, and she said, 
Jeremy, when you preach, I feel like I could hang out with Jesus. And, and that's a huge compliment, except it pissed me off. And the reason why it pissed me off is because, like, who's preaching to you like you can't? Who, who are you listening to that made you feel like you can't hang out with Jesus? Yep. Yeah, that's terrible. I know there's something in that same circle. I mean, there's just some weird thing. I, I don't know. I, I hope it's not a pride thing on my part. But I, I just don't encounter the same kind of conversations and the same kind of mindsets outside of Oregon. Like, I, I remember having those kind of conversations, hearing about all these things. I don't know if it's an Oregon thing. I don't know if it's a like just like a like, cultural what do you, thing. What do you... What do you mean? Explain um, what you mean by like. Yeah. Oregon is dumb. Not no not <laughs> no. <Oregon>. Well, <laughs> well. Well. <laughs> no, no I, I wasn't. That's not what I meant to say. Um, I don't know if it's an age hey. thing, but there's this. Uh, I know what I'm trying to say. I I can't quite figure out how to say it. Not because of politeness. I just can't figure out the words to put together. Um. There's almost this novelty around the idea of intimacy with Jesus where everybody sees it as such a novel idea, but no, I'm generalizing here, obviously, but nobody right. puts it into practice. And it's like the most fascinating thing. And like, I remember for like five years, however long I was I there, it Gianna. was always, okay, cool. I realized I don't have my uh, wrist pieces on, my braces, so I'm just going to go to my chest and put those on before I catch up. Yeah, no worries. Um, it's like this like elusive thing and I don't understand why it's elusive and I know I remember having been there I remember feeling like it but I also I don't know same thing it just kind of it frustrates me when I hear people talk like that because I'm just like, what? why is this news to you yes you can hang out with Jesus yeah well, I got, was, what's funny is tapped. nowhere in scripture does it ever yeah I was gonna say okay, Catholicism is like makes a lot of sense. Then my uh, actually my wife, just to be perfectly honest, my wife has a really hard time praying. Um, yeah. In the in the like uh, praying out loud, and she was raised um, saying her like not Hail Marys, but like she's basically raised like they said grace every night, but it was like. Uh, Father Lord, thank you for these gifts which you're about to receive. Like, oh, Amen. Like, like very ritualistic, ritualistic, and they did it just yeah. because it was like their family was raised that way, and like it's just part of their tradition. Not necessarily, uh, um, you know, like specifically like she believed, you know, there was anything mystical about it. But it was like, no, that's what you say before you eat. Like, that's what you do. And so, like, I, you know, just for respect for the family, like, I would do the same thing. I would just go there, and I would, I would say their family tradition, and then I would, I would pray on my own, and, you know, and do, you know, just, like, actually thank God and, like, be intentional about it. Um, yeah, well, now that you're saying that, I mean, I, I have the areas where I have a hard time, um, like, I have a hard time praying as a family, like, doing, like, the husband-wife prayer thing because it feels so formal to me. I'm just like, I know yeah. that we're both talking to God. Like, why do we... And I know that it's important, but I, that's an example of an area where I have a hard time, actually. I feel super awkward when I'm ex expected to do that. I think it's just because, yeah. like, okay, well, this is the part yeah. where we do this, and I'm just like... Argh. Dude, I'm a pastor, and I feel the same thing, dude. Yeah, yeah. well, because you, feel, you don't want to feel disingenuous, right? Like, you don't want to feel like you're... Like you're because I feel the same thing, man. I'll be praying with my wife, and, like, I, I'm, i like, genuinely thinking of things that will not just, like, talk to God, but also encourage her, right? Right. So, like, because uh, I'm thinking about, you know, what am I, what can I say to genuinely bless Kelsey with what I'm, what I'm talking about? And, like, but I'm also, like, it is genuine. God is hearing it. I am speaking yeah. to God, and I, and he is right. hearing my plea. And so it's, like, it, it is weird, because you're being, you're being both intimate with God, you you're in, preaching in and you're praying to him. at the same time. Exactly. Which is a unique yep. position to be in, right? Well, I, I the reason that I say it that way is because oh, I, I, when I'm praying with people at work and stuff, I, I'm often thinking, I don't know where these people are at spiritually, I don't know what their mindsets are, and so I'll literally be like, God, thank you that you are this, thank you that you are this, you are this. Uh, I'm not reminding myself uh, so much as I'm 
trying to let them know this is who God is. This is why I'm praying. Like, you're literally, sometimes as you're praying, you're preaching a sermon to be preaching. And I've always been like that. So that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. 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 And like Kelsey, like the first time that I tried to get her to pray with me, because like to me it was really important that she, I, you know, because it's not just, it's interesting because you're preaching, but it's also time for you and your wife to sit down and really right. just like vocalize yeah, where you're yeah. at with God together. And so, that preaching right, thing is a, Kelsey it's kind a of a really passive thing. Oh yeah. Oh, no, you're fine. I, I was just like getting at basically like the first time Kelsey was like basically trying to pray out loud with me like she literally got so nervous she started laughing and crying like it was uh, it was like it was such so an cool, it was it was awful like because she she didn't she didn't know how to do it and like I finally got to the point where I understand why it's so hard for her because it is it's not the thing to like speak to God and talk out loud so the people know what you're saying to God um but I was raised in a church that did that, so it's like super normal to me. Like even our youth group would meet together and we would pray out loud, and people would take turns praying out loud. Like it was just a like expected thing that you know, not not that you had to, but like if you were called to and you felt like you had something to say, like you would just you would pray out loud and bless the group. And not like I don't know, bless the group by like, you know, just you know encouraging people and um, and saying things that are on your heart. Playing the Holy Spirit kind of works for you, right? I, I just think there's a benefit to it, but also, yeah, it's totally a socially interesting thing if you don't raise that. Way. It's absolutely, there's absolutely a benefit to it. It's one of those things that it's purely my own awkwardness working its way out. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, I think it's problem. kind of. And when I push through, it's good. I still hate it. Yeah. <laughs> It's a uh, it's thing is God I'm from a different area here. <clears throat> because around here people they, they do tend to pray out loud. Um, and I, I guess some people are, you know, more ritualistic with it. <laughs> but the the main struggle like Dude, everyone this... around me sort of vocalizes and I don't think it's just not how I think or typically appreciate mm -hmm. with God is generally like a casual monologue in my head. Um, yeah. And so it's like it's really weird in a relationship because I legitimately can't formulate my thoughts and talk at the same time. <laughs> well, and there, there's like a, a point to that though. Like, I, mean, I don't think that everyone is is intended to to be that. I don't think everyone is right. intended to to be the kind of person to vocalize and preach while they pray. I think that right. there are different parts of the body of Christ, and like, what? There's different you people. That are... <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, there. <laughs> He's making a joke. That's a bias. That's I know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? No, but like, I don't know. There's just uh, there's just something to be said with like, you know, you have other strengths that you bring to the church other than that, right? No. Uh... Like... <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, you are. Spirit. Oh, what? Spiritual gifts are different. No, oh, you're crazy. You're crazy. Everybody's the same. Exactly, and if you're not like me, then you're wrong. <laughs> so stupid. Oh. <laughs> Son, what am I what? Oh, I'm, I'm making fun of things. Oh, let me... Uh, I hate yeah, how it doesn't let back. you adjust your aim when you're sword. charging your sniper shot. Excuse me, but why the fuck are you fighting it with a flower? <laughs> I know, I got a feather. <laughs> Hey, hold on, I got legit, I got materials right here. Dude, this feather duster does so much poison damage. It's actually one of my highest damage weapons, it's stupid. It is 842 <laughs> attack and 480 damage and poison. Oh my gosh, you're gross. That... And this guy is like super vulnerable to poison, so that's why I used it. Oh yes. But it is my goofiest weapon, it literally looks like I'm beating it to death with a flower. 
It's a uh, it's very Japanese. I do think that. <laughs> like yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's like it's got like poison quills on it. You can see the the little like needles in it, but it's like how is this a hammer? Maybe like. A um. <laughs> Where well, is the weight range? If you're if you're not using it, you can't do that. You're just using it as a fire. Well, actually, yeah, I can see it now. Come here, big daddy. It's an interesting way of fighting this. I didn't think I would be able to get any like damage on it with a hammer, but I was like, no, I'll try. <laughs> Dancing and spinning in circles. Bring a flower around. I scream actually oh, pretty cool. Come down here. I bet you wish I had a better uh, device. Oh, that's not so good. This is definitely a good game for streaming. I'm actually I may buy I will probably buy this on PC when it comes out. I play the same game all the time. Well, the game's amazing, and PC it's gonna look even better. And be able to put my settings to max and play through it again is probably a game that I've honestly been grinding again. I've put so many hours on Diablo 3, and it's, I mean, it's basically like a similar play style to Diablo 3, minus just random loot drops, just to craft things instead. No! Come here. Frozen? How long do you stay frozen? Never mind, there it goes. Too long. I like how you can hear that, like, a little bit of fear. <laughs> the rest of the fight. Like, how long? Yeah. It's a real time <laughs> question. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm under your oh. rock. Yeah, I mean, I guess if I. Uh, Either more money, or if I knew like you know, everything one of you guys is going to get it on PC, I would probably do it. Just because uh, streaming PC is different. Oh, it's, yeah. We'll see, we'll see how things go. They're going to be really, I don't, I probably won't, honestly. I told myself I wouldn't get games multiple times. I've done it like four <laughs> times now. And if I could redo it, I would have got Destiny 2 only on PC once it came out. Um, just because I actually do really enjoy it on PC, but nobody's playing it now. Like, the weapons all function like they should. Um, hand cannons are pretty solid on there. There's just a, yeah, a lot of a lot of options. But games are coming out that I will be playing this year. Spider-Man on PlayStation 4 Pro. Uh, and... Uh, what else? Do you guys have any Trank Bombs? I do. Hey, there's a Legiana carcass on me. I don't know if you guys picked it up yet. Someone trap it. Is it need trapping right now? Yeah. Oh, it is trapped. Throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it. Oh, uh, right. too late. I've got one Trank bomb on me, but I do have... Uh, uh, I made a Shock Trap. I have a Shock Trap. I just set it down. It's one can away. Nice. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Trank bomb. Nice. nice. I didn't want to hit him with that attack. I was like, I'm gonna destroy him! Look at him sleeping. Oh, he's all tuckered out. <laughs> <laughs> he's all tuckered out. <laughs> You'll wake him. Emery? Did you have your headphones on? <laughs> I would have. I was gonna say. Another kind of interesting thing that, like, I know it's just uh, uh, something I don't need to worry about, but has always bothered me that it just, like, I have to internally just ignore it and, like, kind of just ask God that he would help me, like, not be judgmental, is, um, so I was raised in a church that had, like, kind of, like, not older music, but we did sing hymns with, like, kind of up updated hymns rather than, like, yeah. new age music. 
And uh, so it was like awesome music. We had like electric guitars and like an entire like music team that made amazing music and they all amazing voices and everything. But um, one of the things that always bothered me is like my, our congregation was like the kind that our, our pastor would, would say, you know, open up to this Bible and you would hear everyone's pages, pages turning. Yeah, you'd hear pages. Yeah. And it's like people are getting into the Bible and they're doing that. But what you didn't ever see really, and when you did see it, it was always like awkward as you'd see people come in and like most people at my church didn't like don't don't put their hands up when they're singing. And so yeah. like it's just we stand and we sing and we just kind of like it's more of an in, that is more of an internal thing for us. It's like singing to God and like like praising him and, and being thankful and really just internalizing it. And then you there will be like that one person at the front row with both hands up, just like, you know, like shoving their hands in the air and it i don't know why but like it always just felt like awkward to me because it was like oh <laughs> it like feels like you're trying too hard like and i know that you know i i have to assume that they're genuine right i just have to assume the best and that they're they're genuine people not being like that but when the entire church is not doing that the one person in the front row doing that it's like oh like you're not i, I don't know I, I, that that's the only thing that's always bothered me. I don't know why. I don't know why. I I think that's just the culture that you're in. So when you see yep. something yeah. that's countercultural, it's uncomfortable. And then we tend oh, yeah. to moral we tend to moralize cultural norms. Yeah, it's and like so we're in a here. There. Everyone, yeah. everyone sort of puts their hands up, and I'm like really big into people watching. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, occasionally, <laughs> like talking. To or my audio is dropping on people, so it's just like weird for me oh. because I get a really good sense of who's genuine and who isn't. And then it's funny when you go into worship and everyone's doing it like just as enthusiastically, and I'm just like, some of y'all are so full of shit. <laughs> yeah, that yeah that that's just kind of how I feel. I know like that one person probably isn't, but like. It is hard to <laughs> sometimes like well, see it. So, like, but ah! can I give you the same illustration? So yeah. the exact and and here's here's the exact opposite thing happens, and we have the tendency to spiritualize it. And you're listening to everybody, everybody's raising a hand, and then you get the two people that are not, and you're like, oh, yeah. they must not that's, be into that's worship. Me and my but <laughs> but yeah, but see, I'll take it I'll take it even further, and I'll say it like this: like I'm not offended by any of the language that I've heard. Because sometimes I, I say the same thing. My kids are in the room, so I'm not going to do that right now. But uh, most of the people that I quote unquote run with uh, would be calling most of this conversation uh, heresy because we're talking about Jesus and then saying some of our, our, our language. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm, 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 being, I'm being guarded because my children are in the room. And so, uh, I, you know what I mean? And, uh, uh, dude, the reality is, is I, I've come to this conviction in my relationship with Christ and with people that those are words, you know? And it's uh, and I will say like this, my, again, my son are, is 12, my daughter will be 11. And we have conversations about, you know, the other day they had a conversation about the word ass, and I laughed so hard because my kids are bringing it up and what do you do with that uh, that depends you know that depends on why you're saying it and you know I don't want them I don't want them saying that um, at their school I don't want them saying that at church mm -hmm. but you know there's I think there's a time and place where I wouldn't be mad if they said it you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. well and I, t I totally agree and I think like I know that Markham and uh, Mitchell both mentioned, uh, specifically when I was in the party before, like talking about the like cussing and things like that. I personally never struggled until I joined the military, and then my language yeah. definitely changed because I was <laughs> people that dropped the f bomb every two words. Right. Um, but one of the things that I was going to say though is like I can see the not not the flip side, but I can see where Scripture does really talk about it, where it's like we're supposed to be salt and light. And we're supposed to be different and so if like the, if the rest of the world is it, you know is cussing and doing these things and like what what separates us because god calls us to right. be you know to be holy which means 
you know, set above. And so it's like if we're if we're doing the same thing verbally that everyone else is, what's going to make that person go, you know, something different about them? Like. Didn't mean to interrupt you. No, because I. Yeah. No. I started talking. Oh, and I, I mean, I'm done. done. No, I'm done. That's yeah. That's it. Okay. I think I think that's an easy thing, and I think that the differential is the fruit of the spirit. I think it's independent uh, of those things. Uh, so, it's like, it's almost like saying if everybody's wearing blue, then we would need to be wearing red because mm -hmm. it's going to set us apart. Um, I don't. I don't think so. I think that your words. I think the scripture is pretty clear about that. Like. Uh, like basically, I don't know the exact like scripture, but it says, you know, uh, what comes from your mouth, you know, determine or like basically identifies what's in your heart. Mm -hmm. And so, out of the out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and then so if you apply the principle that we were all agreeing on earlier, like for some, I know this for a fact because Jeremy told me this a long time ago. Kind of another anecdotal example of the same principle. Uh, one time Jeremy from the pulpit said, you know, sometimes God loves us like little kids, I'm paraphrasing, and sometimes when you're a parent who loves his kids, you have to change your crappy diaper. And mm -hmm. I don't know if, you might have even said poop, I don't remember, you'll know. You'll, you'll, I said you'll poopy diaper, and I, your poopy and I got diaper. in trouble. And the, pa and the trouble. senior pastor had to take him aside and say, Jeremy, we don't want to push the limits. Getting a little oh, bit too like, close to the what? edge, that sort of thing. And I was and, like, what the F? <laughs> yeah, and what that is, is to some of these old people who got offended when the drums were too loud, crap is a bad word. Now, to yeah. us, crap is the nice word. <laughs> and so, yeah. if you were to apply that, that concern, I think where the concern is valid is when Paul's talking about not letting our liberty trip people up. Same True, as, yeah. there it is. If there are these people with these weaker consciences, then and we're right. not we're not being considered of that, then we're actually stepping into objective moral right and wrong. But right. if you have people who aren't struggling with that, it's literally just a subjective taste. Because to right. some people yeah. crap is Correct. a bad word, to other people shit is right. a bad word. And so right. you can yeah. be around people <laughs> like in the army, I think that you're completely appropriate. But I think you'd be completely appropriate saying, oh, I shit my pants instead of I poop my pants. Some guy's sister. I think there's a there's an objective yeah. line between. That's the line that scripture does draw as well, far as our language. I, I, like, don't let vulgar joking come out of your mouth. Where it's like evident that you're talking about like sexualizing people and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That goes beyond what kind of vernacular you're using. It's actually the substance well, of what you're communicating. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree with that last part. That Dude, you I think guys what's are hard though making my whole night, man. You guys are making my whole night. This is awesome. But then like from but from the flip side too, like when you have words like like I'm not gonna say it just because like I, but so you have words like the F word, which in its like in its actual context is vulgar. Right. It's a right. it's a very vulgar way to say right. it. Like it's not a loving sexual fornication uh, on king, yeah. the consent of the king. Exactly. Rape. So, like, like that specific word, you can't say that that's okay because it literally means to like, to literally have like extremely rough sex that's not generally intimate. It's like a horrible way to say. You wouldn't say you're gonna f your wife, right? Like, well, you wouldn't say that. Oh. I'm gonna go f my wife. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> to her, like, if you said that to your wife, would she would she be happy? I understand. I'm gonna context, f you I right think. now. Yeah. I think, I mean, yeah, because different words mean different things to different people. So even if True. the word was originally created with that well. intent, yeah, right. I mean, you can even talk about, yeah. like, Context. Jesus and Joshua. Context. or I, I don't know. You have different, it's, it's like celebrating Context. Halloween. Some like, some wordplay. people might have originated Halloween <laughs> to be, it's, sorry, It's just, hey, I'm just I'd, throwing it out there. No, 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 I'm just throwing no, it no, out no, there. No, 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 no. I, I feel I, I know that what I'm trying to say is clear. I'm just trying to make it come out clear. I'm trying yeah. to say three different things at once. It's like Halloween is a good example, or Christmas. You have these specific original intents of these observations of these holidays that are mm -hmm. completely divorced from where we are today. And so you have yeah, some people saying, true. oh, Halloween is worship of the devil. And they're like, no, it's not. It's dressing like Spider-Man and getting candy. And so yeah. <laughs> when, when people say, oh, fuck that, 
most of the time we're not sitting there thinking, okay, we're going right. to fornicate under consent of the king. No, we're saying, but, no, that's stupid. But, but, F that that. Kinda, but F that derives from screw that, which is basically like another <laughs> version the, of... The like, same thing. No, 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 same thing. I, Nobody's I thinking about taking anyone behind the shed and like actually penetrating them. They're okay. just like, That's just <laughs> shorthand for... No, the yeah, the, lang the no language has changed right. definitions over no, time. But the, yeah, but I mean, but the but the origin of it, like, if you like, if someone saw that word by itself, genuinely or generally, people are going to say, yeah, that's probably a vulgar word. Like you, most people wouldn't say right. that to their boss unless they knew their boss was chill. So like, it is definitely like still a curse word in modern society. Like anyone, like maybe not anyone. I'm generalizing, obviously, circles, but yeah. like in most circles, most I think circles so. I think would say that it's still a curse word. Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, in some but, circles, you know, I guess in that so way, if like, I were in the circle that didn't, you think wouldn't go that, drop that at a family reunion that. usually. Like, unless your family yeah. reunion is a bunch of people like that are all like that. That all, that all say that. It's... I get that you're saying like, yeah. you I meet totally get what you're, you're saying. You're but... dealing with the culture. Yeah. Real quick, is anybody doing a mission? Have we started anything? I would love to join. I haven't. A mission. Oh. I'll join um, somebody. I'll... I don't care. Oh, Jeremy, you and I probably have to do a cutscene because we're on the same mission. I think. Uh, I don't have any missions right now. I'm supposed to. What am I supposed you to do? You have to go investigate. Speak to I the think. third fleet. Okay. Yeah, same thing for me. But I have a crap ton of investigations and optional quests and all that dude, crap. Dude, I'm down yeah, to just do work our way up Someone investigations. Pick and let us know. So right now, Jeremy okay. and I are maxed off on five stars. I do have right, to. So. I don't care. You guys want to kill the lightning squirrel? Sure. Yes, I do. So I was we have also to do in 30 minutes. You, freaking love you guys. I appreciate this conversation and like, um, too, it is cool to get a uh, to get like different views on it because like my my parents definitely raised me where like dude if I said any of those I I oh. used to say like 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 I don't know if I said frick like dude when I started yeah. saying like frickin oh, yeah. like to like get away yeah. with it. Dude, I had Tabasco mm -hmm. in my mouth faster than you could, yeah. you know, do anything. Yeah. <laughs> I posted, I posted a quest, and I was the same way, man. And it, and my hard part is, is I I am quote unquote a pastor, and so how do I have? And here here's my dilemma. My dilemma is this: I want my, I want my children to to know why they're saying what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Like, whether my kid says you know donkey or whether my kid says the other word for that i want to know i want them to know why they're saying that mm -hmm. you know um and, oh, that and, totally makes and, sense right well and you're and totally to held me... to a i was just well, gonna say you're totally held to a higher standard as a pastor too like you are like you know like I, scripture I even says that you're going to be judged more harshly not like that Correct. you're not that god's no. going to like punish you but like you are called to a higher people... standard right yeah but but that doesn't. And here's what I'll tell you is, I have, I have. I was a youth pastor for 13 and a half years, and so I have kids that, you know, um, I'll, 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 Ethan and Emery, I'm gonna tell a story. But listen, uh, and I'll edit the words. But that doesn't mean you can say these words. Do you guys understand me, Ethan, Emery? Do you understand me? Okay. So I'm on my way to go buy Skyrim for uh, opening night with two of my students. They are 17 years old. So when Skyrim came out, uh, they're like, hey, we're going to buy it on opening night. Do you want to go with us? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And so they're driving and they tell me this story. For the last six months, they've been praying for this kid named Juan to come to youth group. I know they've been praying because I've prayed with them. So the last six months they've been praying. So it's Friday night. We're headed down to go get the game. Thursday night they did college group, there. so they actually were all just seniors and just graduated from high school. And they tell me this. They said, hey, Juan showed up to youth group last night. And I was like, are you serious? Made my whole entire day super stoked, excited. And then they, and they go, uh, yeah, you know Michelle? And I go, yeah. And you guys don't know Michelle, so I'll tell you. She is a young lady who's kind of socially awkward but feels she's called to full-time ministry okay <laughs> first thing they say they say first thing when they sit down to group have yeah yeah 
just the last five seconds. Uh, so they tell me that the first thing Michelle says is once group starts is, I just really can't stand Mexicans. Are you serious? Yes. And my response wow. was not great. My response was, <laughs> what the F? Both, and both of my boy and I was like seriously raging pissed off okay this lady feels like she's called to full-time ministry this my boys have been praying for six months for their friend to come and the first thing out of anyone's mouth the night he shows up to church is that she hates Mexicans he's wow. Mexican he's Mexican yeah okay I assume you the name but yeah I thought you did but just so <laughs> clear and I was like <laughs> seriously like that's what I said and I was like raging wow. pissed and both of those boys here's the thing is both of those boys are at a place in their life right now where they're they're serving Jesus both of those boys are that other guy is not but here's what they told me uh, on New Year's Eve they said the reason why they're serving Jesus the way they're serving Jesus today is because I said the F word in the car and I was like, okay, that's kind of ridiculous. But here's what they said. They said, dude, you cared about our friend as much as we did, even though we prayed for him more than you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because of that Same thing word. with Colby. Right, yeah, the I same thing with Colby. You that? Do you, yeah. uh, no, that's do you want to join us? Yeah, I'm, so, I'm trying yeah, to equip some the... lightning protection gear because I'm wearing some... Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, here's a perfect example. Can I tell that story, Jeremy? Do you want me to? Or you can tell it if you want. Ah, yeah, go ahead. So our pastor's son, when my pastor moved, he's been here now 15 years. He, um, when he moved here, his son had just graduated high school, and his son didn't want to have anything to do with moving over here. And so his son stayed in Salem, and he's a PK. He, and he lived like the like like he didn't believe in God. You know, okay. he was doing drinking and, you know, all kinds of stuff with girls and he just did not act like he had any relationship with Jesus. Um, he kind of, jobs fall out, he kind of moves over here and he's kind of doing stuff, but he's not really serving Jesus at all. So on February 16th, I get a phone call and, and it was after youth group and it's, they said, hey, uh, would you go out to Sherry's with us? It's a little restaurant. And I was like, dude, it's my birthday. I haven't seen my wife. Uh, let me see if she's asleep. So I call. My wife is asleep. Actually, this is before you guys were born. So this is 13 years ago. 14 years ago. Oh, I thought you were talking and to the, us. So I was like, <laughs> no, I was alive. Uh, no, it was these, my you're children. You're 12. But uh, <laughs> these guys. So here's the deal. I go to, go to Sherry's. We hang out for two and a half hours. And we're sitting in Sherry's. And my pastor's son looks across the table from me and he says this. He says, Jeremy, uh, I know what I need to do. I just need somebody to walk me through it. And he goes, the other day I was praying and I said the F word when I was praying to God. And he goes, and I just don't know where I effed up. And he's not editing any of this, okay? Yeah. He goes, I just don't know where I've effed up so bad in my life that I'm saying F when I'm talking to God. And in that moment, right there in Sherry, sitting in the booth, I looked across it to Colby and I said, dude, God's not afraid for you to tell him that you effed up. And I didn't edit it. I just said it exactly like that. And big giant tears start to roll down Colby's face. And Colby just stops and he says, dude, nobody's ever just met me right where I am. Mm -hmm. And right then is when we prayed, and it's when he rededicated his life to, life to the Lord. He served God since then. He leads worship for our church. Um, he feels called to full-time ministry. And, and I don't think that any of that had anything to do with it necessarily, other than it met him right where he was. Yeah. That's amazing, you know? man. And what I think is cool about that is, see, to me, that is the essence of the gospel. That is what Paul says when Paul says, I become all things to all people. I don't believe in any form or fashion God up in heaven was like, oh my Lord, you said a cuss word. I think that God was like, heck yes, and probably a different word. Right? He said, welcome yeah. to the freaking Guardians of the Galaxy. Only he didn't <laughs> say freaking. <laughs> I don't love you anymore. 
<laughs> Can we kill this electric squirrel, please? We're waiting for these dudes, man. I'm I'm joining. I'm joining. But... <clears throat> I mean, one one so, interesting sort of secular story the mission. on it Northeast. Northeast. is because yes. I always go and talk to some of the high schoolers about college. You know, right. they want to know what's going to be expected of them. And the question I always get is if they're allowed to cuss in college. You know, these hey, are just regular are high real? school kids. They're, they're not <laughs> Christians or anything like that. Because they don't view anything wrong with it. Like, but right. they're held to this, like, standard by, a, you know, the adults and the, the high school teachers and stuff. And it's just like, I always tell them that you can do whatever you want in college. Ar arson. But I wouldn't advise oh. it. because Not because it's wrong. But because it's viewed as sort of unprofessional. Right. <clears throat> and some teachers will allow it and some won't. And I view it as sort of the same when it comes to <clears throat> the religious aspect of it. Where hey, certain join situations... The Sorry, I just realized I have weak thunder armor, so I'm swapping my armor out real quick. Ugh. Sorry, dude, keep going. <laughs> where in some situations it's, you know, okay. And and others, when it's making people uncomfortable, then right. it's a it's a bad thing to do it. But it's when you, it really kind of hits home there talking to them about it. The fact that the view of it being wrong and offensive, like what words are, right, is completely skewed from generation to generation. True. Are you watching the video I sent you? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Watch both of it. What the hell are you saying? He sends me this video in the middle of our conversation. <laughs> My buddy just sent it to me and I was like, you guys have to see it. But... So dumb. Uh, I was thinking something. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mitchell's saying really good stuff. I know, <laughs> We're listening I know. to Phil Collins dubbed <laughs> over Dragon Ball Z. It's okay, I don't think that, I'm, I'm that insightful. Oh, I my word. The, the things <laughs> for yes, me, you, you guys, but in, in this... Go ahead, Mitchell. It's just like, there are some things that are, without a doubt, objectively wrong. But right. when it comes to the language aspect of it, <laughs> I mean, there was a time when the cuss words that are cuss words now weren't. Right. Or the words didn't even exist. Or, it's so hard right. as a Christian to be like, God always looked down upon the F word. Yeah. Right. Even before the existence of the F word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting, too, because, like, uh, I was telling... I saw Markham this the other day. I think you were in the party too, Mitchell. Um, it's basically like my pastor has been going through um, Ecclesiastes. And some of the stuff he said, like, as a kind of more of a conservative Christian, like, at first, like, uh, it didn't bother me, but it was like, part of me just, like, it made my skin itch a little bit. I was like, Argh! But um, as I listened more and more, I really just, like, got what he was saying. And, like, it really hit me in a really positive way and also like really convicting um so he was talking about the fact that uh um basically solomon was this uh like <laughs> he he compared him to, to um uh, he compared him to basically Hugh like Hefner. the three you know he said hugh hefner and you know a bunch of other people all combined into one. Oh yeah he had the political power he had the you know he had the the wisdom money. and the knowledge and money yeah like so he, you know, he was saying these things, and he was telling me how, like, um, you know, in Ecclesiastes, he, he talks about the fact that, like, he partied and did drugs, like, to see if that yeah. would bring joy in life, and yeah. it didn't. And he's like, I did these other things, and, like, tried to find enjoyment in life, and that didn't, and, like, knowledge I didn't do it, and everyone. all these things. Yeah. Yeah, like, he, he had, he had yeah. 160-something wives. Like, 
Just a lot. He had 700 <laughs> concubines. He had 300 oh, yeah, wives. That's insane. That's insane. So like, have problems with one. <laughs> right? No. Uh. But so like that was just really, really cool to, uh, you know, be like, okay, like first of all, that culture was completely different than ours, and that was totally acceptable to God, like in that culture. Yeah. Like, I tried so to like, like I was having the same conversation with Kayla the other day, and she like was almost offended. <laughs> I like, was like, okay. I'm just I know saying, it's like, so cool. Yeah. She's like, I just can't see. Yeah, uh, no one's supposed to. And then, and then like, I had to drop, drop it normal. because at some point it would be turned into. Oh, so you're saying. Dude, I want another wife. <laughs> no. Hey, dude, there are AG pastors in Africa right now that still have more than one wife. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, I, we just. I personally don't because, like. I, I, yeah. yeah. It's gonna be like, hard. Isn't that like a New Testament thing though, where Paul says like yeah. you can't be in church leadership if you have more than one? <laughs> well, they didn't get saved. They didn't get saved when they had multiple wives. The teaching that they do now is if you're only married to one, stay married to one. If you're married to three, take care of them. <laughs> yeah. It would be a little I agree with that. Like, right, Paul says you can't even be like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I get that. No, yeah, I, 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 I would, I wouldn't be able to justify it. I would have sense. Uh, more so, especially in their culture where it's such like a caretaker situation. Yeah. But yeah. So just, yeah, just I, something that I was, you know, I, I get so that the culture is different, but also the, uh, um, I don't know, other aspects too. Like I, I had a really awkward conversation that actually really upset me. And it wasn't, I think it all came from a miscommunication, but also, like, I had never really, I, I don't know. So, like, the uh, the whole thing that, like, God is not, God is not a male, like, that God could possibly be a woman. And I was like, no, God is a spiritual being. Like, he he was, you know, they say he because of the, if if God would have come down and, like, basically worked through, through these men, and those men would have come to the rest of the world and said god is a woman in that in that era like they would have been killed like this like i don't know so, so like i totally get kind of what they were trying to get at is that like i don't know they were just trying to make it from like a feminism point of view which was really upset me it was like yeah so it was uh i didn't like that but i totally get the point that like okay god is one it's not like necessarily biological um, right like God, this God is spirit. You know, there's like, but He is the Trinity as well. And like, Jesus came here as a man. You know, so it's like, I don't know. So there's that aspect. Well, I think you and I had a similar but different conversation. Didn't you and I talk about that about the shack? Oh yeah, yeah. Because that's she, me and you. Yeah, like, absolutely believed in the shack. Like that was like one of her sources of like religious freedom was reading the shack. Yeah, me and Mark like, had a conversation. Freedom, but I wouldn't be getting the doctor. <clears throat> no, and that's what they were the... trying to do, get doctor. Because a lot of people don't like doctor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not yeah, how me and... it works. Me and Markham had a conversation <laughs> a long time ago about. I don't know how to phrase it, I didn't even get to explain it. Um... <laughs> no! But it was basically... I, I haven't phrased it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I don't remember the specifics of the conversation, so if there is any doubt about that. I, I don't doubt that we had it, because we've talked about everything, but I don't doubt it. About uh, how... God is either male nor female. Um, that's what gonna sound kind of like. It is, divi it is divine nature. <laughs> no, it is divine nature, yeah. I mean, you can differentiate because you know, Jesus is clearly male. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he comes down as male, but we had the 
conversation about how he is referred to as male, you know, as God, yeah. the Father. It's it's a it's a male role that he takes on. Um, but like when you look at say the Holy Spirit things are actually a little different because because it was, it was basically um, after something sexist that happened like at my church or something like that um, and someone was saying like the roles of women were lesser and women are described as helpers and the Holy Spirit is described as a helper so helper? you have to so you have to acknowledge, you know, God's sort of feminine role, and by holding this view that women are lesser, also hold a view that, like, God is lesser. Oh. Mm. Right. I, see. That's, I see what you did there. Dude, that's, that's fucking ninja. I mean, I, I think it, I think it has some anecdotal value. I don't know if right. yeah. you could really tie that. I don't think you could fly a kite with that string, but... <laughs> Makes some like cool string. Yeah. You could make a god. Just... You could make a god's eye with that string. Um, I I think the, the purpose of the Holy Spirit on a deeper level still is analogous to the role that a woman plays like in marriage. Um, and in that sort of family relationship. So I do think in the sort of idea of complementarianism that's present in marriage, that's also present within the Trinity, so that you can't really theologically devalue one role over the other without devaluing one aspect of God over the other. Which a lot of um, different like, Christianities do. You know, it's it's like often heard about Baptists, like how they're too into the Holy Spirit, or about other people how they completely ignore the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, and there's something like that. I don't know. It's weird because the churches around here, I like, feel like claim to be. Baptist and Pentecostal and stuff, but then they don't really hold up to the standards that are generally set, like the stereotype. Okay. Like their uh, statement of faith kind of thing is a lot different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the, the church I generally go to is technically Baptist, but the the main pastor is like Baptist and Pentecostal and then I had a baby and Baptocostal? <laughs> and then I don't even And I don't even know what my youth pastor that I've been really talked to is. He's just uh, got his own sort of beliefs. Like conversating with him is similar to having a conversation with you guys. Doesn't really fit into it. Nice doctrinal box. Yep. So, uh, I'm trying to decide how to make right now. Dun, dun. Sorry. Sounding contrary. I, I, I can't. I can't make the leap that because the wife is referred to as a helper, that helping is a feminine trait. I can't think of. I can't get there. I don't think that there's enough. I don't know what the phrasing. Uh, does, do we want to trap this guy or do we want to kill him? Doesn't make a difference. I don't have a trap. Let's see if I can craft one. Yeah, actually, I'm not going to explain it anymore. I just don't see. I can't. I, told, see I agree. I agree. Connection with you. between the two. I agree with you. I think that like 
a lot of times people want to overanalyze scripture when, and, and it's kind of like, like what I told you before, the gospel in its in its uh, in its uh, I guess like basic form is honestly really simple. God God wouldn't w God wouldn't send or God wouldn't like provide this this source of <laughs> salvation and hide it behind some like insane ridiculous you know cryptic message where everything needs to be interpreted to understand it um now obviously right at a higher on. level where you're at a higher level when you're talking about like discipleship and and apologetics and things like that you have to be able to defend defend the faith right but but for in its entirety you should be able to look at scripture and say okay if someone in africa can pick this up on their the scripture up which like the word of god is living and active and you know so it's like it people can people can pick it up and read it and come to know the lord just by reading it you know <laughs> and, and have salvation through christ just by understanding the gospel that message in its entirety is is there i think that everything else is kind of like kind of just nice Peripheral. i guess nice to have yeah right but yeah, I think it's like a parfait where like you can eat the parfait without knowing everything that's in it. But then like, like an onion. You can't <laughs> Where did <we> go? <laughs> I thought onion first and then I went with parfait and I didn't even realize I was doing a Shrek thing. I knew uh, it was not on the front of my brain. I think it was like subconsciously there somewhere, but uh, anyways, um, I mean there is Mysterion, like if we if you like dig into like Romans and Galatians. I mean, yep. they're, it's Romans. They, there's stuff going on beneath the surface that gets so deep and so intricate, and there's oh, like yeah. callbacks to freaking Genesis and like all this obscure nonsense that's not nonsense. It's actually just like the freaking Matrix. That stuff's yeah. definitely there, but like, yeah, it's not like <sighs> the necessary part for your salvation is like clearing front yep. center. And then there's this like enriching like I mean, you don't need to know how chocolate complements caramel in order to enjoy the parfait. But if you do have the palate to distinguish those things, it, you might have yourself like a really good time in the process. Like you're gonna have a good time either way because it's a parfait. But like if you're like paying attention to the flavors, like that's I don't want to say next level as if you're like attaining something. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> hey, I babies, would it's nine thirty. It's time for bed. That it's a stretch to <laughs> say that the to go like full out and be like, yeah, the Holy Spirit's definitely like a girl or something this like that. Better. Right. Um, I also, you know, would. I don't know. I, I typically argue that God is doesn't have a gender except for when he came as a human who obviously, you know, had the biology, had a gender, was a guy. Yeah. Um, but also, I but I do feel like when it comes to the roles, just on a sort of philosophical I... level, God gave specific roles to guys and to yep. girls that is true and that both roles are good um and that you see god sort of fulfilling those roles as well um within the trinity so that looking at that the okay. conclusion that one of them is Turn like off. male or female would be wrong but the conclusion that females aren't lesser or the the role that they've been giving isn't isn't a lesser role. that's the part i like i think still like what you just said right there is yeah. what i liked i posted it that's great it, I, I think yeah i think he nailed it on the head with that um i was thinking i was actually i don't know if it's the exact same thing but it feels like the exact same thing in a different show and what uh william Lee craig talks about this and how god carries um, both masculine and feminine traits in his nature. And yeah. Those traits have made their way into creation uh, through different expressions. And there's even some of that. I want to say it's in Jeremiah. I could be wrong, but 
it's one of the major prophets when uh, God is talking to Israel, and it's like super minor and cherry picked, but I think that it's valid anyways. Where God says, "I wanted to gather you," and it's like a motherhood. Yeah, it's like definitely like mom status. Mother, right there. yeah, right. yeah, that's mother. Um, and, that's actually one of the verses that that's one of the verses that 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 person I was talking to you about that she quoted that and said that that's where God is like oh, uh, yeah. might be oh, a right. woman. That's super annoying because when you and I talked about the shack, I quoted it to you talking about the same. So I hate that I can like have such like a moderate response and then she can use it to make, take such an extreme, oh, yeah. like unjustifiable. I hate yep. when people take like solid oh, premises and reach they literally are diving. Well, the thing is, they want to believe what they want to believe. Right. So rather than taking yeah. scripture at face yep. value and reading it what it is, yep. they dig for a meaning deeper than is there. Okay. And that's why I say scripture simple, because when people dig for a meaning, they can find it. If they want right. to go and try and figure a way, if they only look at a portion, if they looked at in scripture in, in its entirety, and they looked at the New Testament, and then looked back at the points it references in the Old Testament, they can't come to that conclusion. Go. But if they yeah, just look at get, one verse, they can't. Really, you can get into really complicated stuff, but it's specific stuff. Like, just because something's complicated doesn't mean that it's vague. Yeah. Like just because what? it's complicated doesn't mean that you can complicate bedtime. things to make it objectively say something that me. it didn't. I'm, I'm so working on it. Man. Yeah, I'm gonna change okay. my equipment. And Sorry, I can't it. move until you guys join me. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it there's no just the, the simple posted. fact of the matter. Like, what did the writer intend to communicate? Uh, and let me try. If they did, then they did. If they did. Oh, maybe it's only. Maybe it can only. No, it says. Oh, party members one of one. That's why I gotta quit this one. One person quest. But yeah, so that's all I was saying is like when, when I was talking to you before, because I felt like we, um, the last time we talked about when I was saying that scripture was simple, um, I, I think I communicated it wrong. My, my point was, is what I was telling you is that, you know, people can, can manipulate scripture to what they want. That's why I have a lot of friends who right. absolutely say that scripture says that that homosexuality and that gay marriage yep. is okay because like you know wherever points but i'm like they're because they pulled the same card that we've talked about we're like well in that culture it wasn't okay that's what they say it's like it, back in the day right. it was wrong and now it's okay because it's a new culture so it's like but if you but you could apply literally you could apply that to almost anything right and and, right. and then make anything that god has said is wrong okay in scripture yep and so it's like hey there's no sin and that, that's just like simple reading comprehension stuff. That's where I start to actually, I'm not going to say that I'm getting <laughs> impatient about it because I'm not, but there is like a, a, a unique level of frustration where you're just like, there's really easy answers for those objections. Like, yeah. it was wrong in their culture because of the timeless prescriptions that were given to them that superseded <laughs> culture. They were outside of culture. Before culture had even been established, we had the model. And then when culture was established, we had the proscription, which is like a, not a prescription where God prescribed something, but where he forbids something. Like homosexuality yeah. was proscribed. And in the New Testament, it is proscribed. And Paul doesn't cite cultural considerations. Paul cites the order of nature. Paul, uh, Jesus doesn't, uh, Jesus doesn't, directly address homosexuality but he does address marriage and sexuality and it's yeah. always in the context of heterosexual marriage we were given the model before a culture had ever been established of what marriage was it was complementary between a man and a woman with specific roles not to say that every yeah. marriage fleshes out the same but there's those there's those specific complementary features between a yeah. man and a woman and that was the that was the way it was and so you don't need to know Jeremy, I don't know if I heard this from you. I think I heard it from someone else. Um, when banks are being taught to identify counterfeit money, yep. they don't go through and learn what all the counterfeit money looks like. They study what real money looks like because if it deviates from what they know to be real money, then they can know what's fake. You don't have to memorize every fake thing. You don't have to address every single fake out there to be able to establish it's fake. You, are, you address what the objective source is. Yeah. If it deviates from that objective source, you can know that that's not the case. And that's the same principle that's in effect in Genesis. Yeah. And that's that's setting aside the fact that it literally is specifically addressed in both the New Testament.
Testament and the Old Testament. Yep. Like, it's so simple. <laughs> well, it's like Rome. Well, like uh, the other thing is like uh, there's a there's a pattern in just history itself that shows that like advanced civilizations reach a certain point where sin becomes acceptable and morality disappears because people are evil and uh, it tears. So <laughs> I don't know. It's just uh, yeah. I just have a friend who's very, I grew up with him, we both went to the same church, our parents raised us extremely similar, and somehow he ended up like a, a weird nerdy hipster who is a, universe, a universalist now, who thinks that hell is not an actual place, and that it's more or less just to describe a, um, I don't know, just a bad, like kind of like a, a, like folklore, like saying you don't want to go to hell, and it's used as like a, I think in scripture, and he also said that the devil, yep, and he's also saying that the devil, that Satan is, uh, because when, when God said, uh, to, I can't remember who he said, it was it Peter who said, get away from me, Satan. Yep. Um, uh, when he addressed Peter, like he uses that to say that, well, right there, like God, you know, like scripture is, is saying that, that, you know, he called him Satan and it's like, well, he's not actually Satan. So was it just a social thing to say like, uh, evil or the embodiment of evil in the world, like, you know, not an actual person. And so that's what he believes. He believes that all people are going to heaven because scripture says that God came to save the world and that that basically our job is to just be really nice people and that everyone's saved and we're all going to heaven and no one's going to die and go to hell. I'm, I'm familiar with that and I have some sympathy for it. I've kind of moved away from it, but I get that. I get how people can, I get how somebody can come to that conclusion because I was on the edge of it for a while. But mm -hmm. the rest of it is just so easy. Really quick, did you end up activating the quest or did you back out? Because I can't. Um, I it didn't end up being one we could all do together. But it looks like oh, I don't know oh. what Mitchell's doing. Are you doing it yourself? Um, yeah, I just started an expedition simply because I will probably be logging off here in a little bit. Okay. Yes. Yeah, one here. Let me see if I can have uh, my. Let me post an investigation then. That way we can. Yeah. Something. Uh, I don't, I'm so sick of fighting Pookie. Dude, I have nobody. I have these. Dude, I have a ton of quests too, man. I mean, I haven't done any of my. Uh, like, I have. Let's see. Optional ones. Yeah, I have a do, lot of optional Do the investigations. Because investigations are the same as the optionals, but you get more rewards for them. Specific like rewards. I have an arena to fight Ligiana. Yeah, I, have no idea I don't think we can all. I don't think we can do multiplayer arena, can we? I have no, no. idea. It doesn't say. I'm not aware oh. of it. Do you guys want to capture a T-Rex? Uh, yeah, sure. sure. Cool. Let me pick up oh, some stuff. Know. Yeah, let me get some trap stuff. Using the trap. Um, it gives you tra it gives you traps in the chest. For the oh, but still gonna buy, buy traps. Got two. I was thinking something. I got something. Last last thing we talked about was the existence of the devil and the definition of hell. Uh, it, was, it was something before that. I think it might have been something about relativism, but I don't know. Chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> Not that far back. Oh, dude, you guys make my day. Like, seriously. <laughs> well, and I think the reason is, uh, I guess I have to say this. this these conversations are, remind me a lot of the youth pastors here in, in Redmond. Uh, we all ate together at lunch and it used to be that they always wanted to get together and pray and do these things and I used to just get pissed because dude, nobody was real you know because everybody was worried that you know what are you gonna think if I tell you I want to stab my wife with a fork you know and so they wouldn't be genuine in their prayers and so I just said dude I don't want to pray with you I don't want to pray with you I don't want to share curriculum I want you to know me and I want 
to know you. And I Do you want to know them? them? And I want them to know me. <laughs> no, not biblically. Yeah, not, 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 not biblically. And he knew her. No, not like that. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, but dude, I wanted to know them, and I want I wanted them to know me, so that because I just believe this. I believe that when you have real relationship with people that are actually following Jesus, then you can actually share what what's really going on in your life. And people care, and they'll do something about it. And, and you can't fake that. And so, we would hang with those guys. And, and you know, my friend who's a Baptist, who he and I have incredibly different theology. You know, and he, you know, the conversation would go things like this, and he would go, "Hey, Jeremy, can I ask you a question?" I'm like, "Yeah." And he goes, D "Do you pray in tongues?" And I said, "Yeah." And he goes, okay, that messes up my theology. And I go, why? He goes, because I'm pretty sure you're not possessed. And, uh, and, that made me, and that made me laugh, you know. And then, you know, probably two, three months later, he asked this question. And he says, Jeremy, can I ask you a question? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, when you pray in tongues, do you believe you're praying the heavenly language? And, and what I said to him was, well, I, I, I read in the Bible that when they prayed in tongues, according to scripture, that they prayed earthly languages. That's what the scripture says. And so I believe that what I pray is an earthly language that I don't understand. But here's the thing. Can there be heavenly language? There could. I'm not against it, but I'm not going to say mine is. And he goes, Jeremy, I like you because you always go back to the Bible. Anyways, the point I'm making is that they he, he got to this place where he comes in and he asks the question, what do you guys think about hell? You know, um, do you believe in annihilation? Do you believe in uh, that the human soul is only um, in, in purgatory? You know, he asks all these questions, and we end up wrestling with this. And here's what I've come to, and it's the same as the rapture theories. Uh, when does the rapture happen? And well, it depends on what what's lens you put on when you come to the scripture because just like just like you guys were talking about uh, quoting scripture and both sides are quoting the same exact scripture to use it to move to push their point mm -hmm. is if I come in with my lens saying no this means this because I want it to mean this so I can make it mean anything I want and here's where I've come to I still think that we're supposed to wrestle with scripture I still think we're supposed to study to show ourselves approved I still think that there are some deeper things that you have to wrestle with that are not necessarily clear but are very clear if you'll actually read them according to what the scripture says but you have to read them according to what the scripture says but there are some other things there are some other things that we freaking argue about and we cause division about that God I don't know genuinely cares otherwise he would have gave us more details about it you know that's a good point yeah you know and like rapture that. and uh e even like I, I i believe in hell and i know where i stand as far as what i read in scripture but because of this question that, that this guy asked me there's a part of me that goes hmm i don't know uh i think i'm gonna not i think i'm not gonna anchor on this i'm gonna lean on this like rapture theories and things like this I lean I know I'm not anchored on, on any of theory specifically any longer because Jesus didn't say it and there's enough confusion that Jesus did it on purpose right mm -hmm. yeah I think God and so when I have these conversations according to the need yeah right so when you guys are having these conversations I'm like freaking geeking out because I'm like you guys make me think different. You guys say things that I'm like, wait, that's not what that means. And then if I just shut up and listen, you guys get around and you're like, oh, I'm like, oh, no, you guys are saying the exact same thing. And you guys are arguing even though you're saying the same thing. And, uh, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm like, my face hurts from grinning. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Jeremy, I, 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 what I, was I, I learned this on Tuesday nights like when you were raising me. This is, it's literally, it's been the model for everything is we just sit down and we're like, okay, this is what I seem to understand. And I don't remember the content of most of right. those conversations, but I, I remember <laughs> the tone and it, it still felt like, it felt like this. Um, I feel like everybody would walk in, 
uh, we'd have some stuff that was kind of like up in the air and then somebody would say something and kind of anchor it down and then everybody would kind of agree more or less. I remember a few times where I think maybe like Andrew and I would get into something and I don't remember what any of it was, but... I think Andrew was probably just, just being like, a prick. He was. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's why I think I didn't remember what it was because most of it was just him being argumentative. <laughs> but... Um, I felt like most of the time, this is kind of going off on a random tangent, but I think the Holy Spirit talks to us so much. I remember talking to you about this where like Pastor Dwayne would be talking about something on a Sunday and I was like, I kind of felt like God told me that like two weeks ago, but I didn't know that it was God. I wasn't sure. So I didn't yeah. say anything about it. And I think, I mean, that's still the way that it is. I mean, my favorite teachers and uh, speakers, I, I, I literally heard somebody say it this today. I was listening to Jordan Peterson at work. He was talking to Dave Rubin. He's a clinical psychologist, like a Canadian clinical psychologist. He's a Christian, um, and he's been making a lot of waves, kind of in the political sphere, because he's been talking about. He's just he became a public speaker through some controversy, and it turns out he had a ton of really insightful stuff to say about just about everything. But he said that he's had people tell him reason that they like him so much is because he's been able to say things that they've known their entire lives but they never quite knew how to articulate and when we would have those tuesday night bible studies it, there was so much of that going on I found it. it was stuff that i felt like i knew and um it would be confirmed like through these conversations and i think part of it has to do with just the fact you know the principle like god is there when two or more gather in his name that sort of stuff where he kind of just shows up when you dig in. Come with expectation? Um, yeah, and maybe the, maybe there's an arrogant part of me. I don't feel, feel like it's arrogant, but I'm talking about it anyways. It's just oh, like, there's oh. so much of the stuff that I feel like I've known the entire time, and sometimes we just need to talk it out. Right. It's always right. Okay. <laughs> All right. And super uh, humble about that it, That was the point. That was my actual point. <laughs> Are you guys at North um, Camp or South Camp? I went to Northeast. Yes. Jared said you found it. I found it. He's heading. I would go. Oh, he south went hard camp. west. Yeah, I go South yeah. Camp and then just run to the run to the west from you. I would okay. have quick travel to South Camp. But yeah, I remembered what I was going to say. Um, it was back when we were talking about homosexuality. Um, everyone turns into like this uh, mysteri like mysterious historian when it comes to that debate and discussion. Uh, yeah. Um, and what I find funny is that it shows how little they've actually researched it because they treat it as if that's always been some sort of like taboo thing that people have always hated. But the, the view of it being wrong grew out of Judeo-Christianity, not the other way around. Like, before God... Uh, I disagree. You disagree? Because of Paul's writing, uh, just in, in studying... Um, oh my lord, my brain just went dead. Um... Oh, in, in Corinthians, sorry, in Corinthians, when Paul says that not even the Gentiles do this, right? Oh, okay, never mind, I'm, 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 that's sleeping with your mom, it's incest, sexuality. Sorry, dude, my brain went to the wrong place. <laughs> I, I can, sorry, I can dude. half confirm what Mitchell was talking about. Like, for instance, in Roman culture, homosexuality was perfectly acceptable, but uh, right. homosexual marriage wasn't even a concept. That's because they did everything in Roman culture. <laughs> yeah, but that's a, that's a good example because Roman culture was kind of the summation of like all of secular culture. Put it in and it was obviously Greek culture as well with like Alexander the Great. Like everybody kind of signed up with most of them. Not to say most of them, I'm just kind of generalizing. But um, they often didn't bat an eye at it. I don't know. So I can just say I, I can like no, I, yeah. I'm sorry, I was, dude. I was, I was actually, my brain, uh, my brain thinking took a wrong scripture. So yeah, I think you, I think yeah. you were right. 
I was actually thinking specifically, um, like way back historically, um, like before they were out of Egypt type stuff. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, um, because, you know, by the time the New Testament rolled around, there were some likely some cultural differences that had came about, but before... See, I don't know because I don't know enough about pre-Jewish specific, but I know for a lot of cultures, oh fuck, it was accepted. It just uh, they they pretty much did whatever with whoever. Yep. I mean, you can even say Sodom and Gomorrah. And that stuff was definitely there for a long time. And it yeah. was pretty rampant. Mm hmm. I don't know. It's such a weird I spot. Think you I think mean, can't. Yeah, I don't right. know. I don't think you can say Sodom and Gomorrah because the, the fact of that was God's judgment because of that. Yeah, but uh, what I'm getting at is it was, it, was a non, it was a non-Jewish culture, I don't think. I right. Mean, that was before the Jewish culture existed. It was Abraham's day. And they obviously didn't have any respect for the natural law or God. And it seemed to be very pro. But it's, not, it's not a knockdown argument saying, see, that must mean it's the case. But I think that it's uh, consistent with that idea, at least. I don't think it's proof. Come and get some! This is Sparta! I don't know. I'm, I'm so tired of... I, I'm just... genuinely tired of... that cultural conversation, just probably because everything's hyper-saturated in it. It's yeah. one of those things that I just don't even take any interest in, unless it's absolutely prudent. It's not a fight I want to pick when they do. Um, I'm just gonna handle it. <laughs> Part of that just comes with consuming so much social, um, so much media on social issues that it's just, I'm just forever going to be tired of talking about that. I'm always interested by it simply because I watch a lot of those things and think, you know, that they should mention, like there's some point that they're not mentioning I that are really uh, just perspectives that I think people should hear. Um, is let me let me turn off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off switch real quick. So I can uh -oh. I can say this. Carry on. But if anybody uh, stuck with us as long. Mm -hmm. The uh, the biological reality of homosexuality, especially for guys, is just absolutely terrible and, and rather unloving. Like they legitimately having intercourse, mm -hmm. having intercourse that way, like the reason why they have more. Um, are more prone to STDs, and that's one thing that a lot of people talk about it. The biological reason behind it comes from the fact that it's literally causing tears, and so that the, the bacteria grows in those tears and enters your body that way. Terrible. Like, it's, yeah, it's very clearly not meant for that. Uh, I think that's a Run, 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 get out of here, kid. If you roll, it uh, mitigates the fire, though, which will just keep burning. Um, I think Stop, drop, would roll. Be something along the lines of sodomy isn't necessarily a part of homosexuality. There's a little sex, I think, as much more. Usually, just on the actual, like, 
sex, sexual practices, it's almost always in reference to oral sex. Mm hmm. Which likely isn't satisfying, and uh, that would be my rebuttal to that. Um, simply based on statistics, though, I'm not, you know, I, I wouldn't know. Right. We're having to apply to, <laughs> we're having to defer to people on this one. But I would, I it's, would confirm that. <laughs> it's one of those things where <laughs> when you, <laughs> where when you I'll confirm that the, as, a, uh, as a married man, I'll confirm that that is true and I'm okay with it. When, when you look in the community and you see the behaviors that they have and how much they bounce around, like... Right. For Arson, heal yourself. For sexual pleasure, you know, going so far as I think like upwards of eighty percent would just like straight up have you know intercourse with strangers. Yeah, now that now that you say that, I might have to. I guess in my opinion, I think that you might have actually talked to me out of it. As I'm saying that, things are coming to memory. Um, William Lane still Craig did a very good. Yeah, I remember talking on about it. that. I remember, um, and also, I mean, I remember some conversations that I've had with people that uh, you're talking about, like, exploring those sort of things. Uh, so I think it's definitely part of it. Well, I mean, the, the big reason why I feel like that, watch the poison on the ground that just got popped, is that you see it in culture today, people treat it like it's, you know, better and safe and like everyone that feels like they might want to try it should do it. And you really shouldn't. There's, you know, risks to it. Do you have, you know, especially for bottomy, you do that too many times and you legitimately have to wear a butt plug because you're not going to be able to keep your feet. You know? Okay. Ugh. Yeah, it's... Yes. Oh crap, I There's actually... There's a reason why I turned off the Twitch. I, uh, dropped the crap. Someone saved me. <laughs> That's it, oh, when, you, when you see me, uh... Where's hold on, trap, uh... don't attack him. No, uh, he's running, doesn't matter. He's not gonna go in my trap. No, I've got a... I've got a I... I don't have any, uh... Oh, I'll be able to catch smoke, up. Too. Oh, I have one smoke. I have a drink. I have. I, I have, have eight drink bombs. I just gotta get him now. Yeah, we'll we'll catch him. yeah okay, we, we can catch him. Yeah, we'll get him. Wait for me. Come on. Um, gotta eat some uh, rations. But yeah, I just. It's kind of like when they have the conversations about. Would you want your kid to be homosexual or trans? And if you say no, then you're a bigot. It's like I, I would definitely say no. Like especially to the trans. That's a hard life. Not, not necessarily because I hate trans people, but because there's just like an undeniable statistic. You know. Oh come on! Oh, he got. Yeah, he's, he's in there. He got, got, oh, get him, boys! In bed, I will come get you. No! Statistical captured. reality. Where? No, he's captured. Oh. No, we uh, captured him. Oh, he is. He's got bubbles, you're right. Sorry, I was going to tell you what to me. Go get in your bed. I'll be there in a second. Have a look yeah, at his mouth! The, the high depression, the high suicide. What if they want to go through transition? There's tons of health risks what? with being on puberty blockers and hormones. You know, later in the game, it's yes. just, it's just you know a complete shit sandwich. It, it's not something I would wish upon them, but I wouldn't hate them for it or anything like that. Right. Yeah. Oh, it would not be desirable. Alright, I need to go tuck my kids in.
Yeah, no worries. I think I need to uh, go talk to myself then. <laughs> I'm staying up. I will. I am probably gonna lollygag a little bit and then go to bed because I always think like, oh. It's Saturday morning, I'm gonna be able to sleep in, and then I remember I have a five-month-old child, and that doesn't happen. Nope. Uh, uh. I did get to meet my goal, like, earlier today, I was like, I am definitely stay up and just binge this game yeah like it i'm sad that my friend didn't get on yet kyle kyle didn't get on he told me he was gonna be on your friend i hate you oh i agree though uh there's a lot of um there's a lot of issues with the, I don't know, the whole mindset. Because everybody wants to be accepting, that's the thing. Everyone wants to feel like they're the most empathetic, uh, you know, amazing, progressive person. And so instead of, like, instead of thinking about anything, they just accept everything. Like, if that's your choice, that's fine. And it's like, no, like, you guys, do you realize what you're condemning them to? Like, do you realize what all the science says about it? It's okay to say no sometimes. It's okay to, to be against things. You don't have to please everyone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I, I do like to... It's not your job to appease everybody else's decisions. Exactly. I do like to put a distinction on there where they can do whatever they want. I'm not against them yes. doing whatever they want. It's just to, to the point where they want me to accept that it's good. And, and it's kind right. of like, I know this is probably a bit of a random segue, but that acceptance is yeah. is a thing now apparently and it's like i'm i'm fat and you know i i don't hate myself or anything like that <laughs> but i'm not gonna go around and be like i'm healthy like, yeah I'm <laughs> did it, you see you know, that uh i think it was uh oh gosh um can't think of the college I think Princeton. Princeton did a study actually that they actually disproved that the uh, they finally were just like, okay, we're actually going to do a study and show this, and they disproved the healthy fat um, thing. Uh, they did a huge study because there are people who were saying before, like, well, I'm you know I've got like yes, I'm on a but I'm running I'm running marathons. Like I'm able to do marathons and I'm able to do all these things and I live a healthy lifestyle, but it's like. Oh but my you're god, still that's still so 24 percent body fat. Like or you know, higher. And so it's like they proved that they are still at a higher risk for heart disease. Like it does not matter if you are you know, if you run and you do stuff and you have an active lifestyle, if you eat garbage and you have you are genetically large, you are at a higher risk for, for heart disease. Hands down. <laughs> so it's like so I said I was going to stop fighting with people on Facebook, but it just, it keeps happening. And uh, I feel like you guys will really love this current argument I'm in. Because it's about whether doing yoga is bad as a Christian. And oh I'm going to say that. No, no, no. no. Because it's based on pagan, and, based on pagan belief. And I drew, I drew a distinction where if you're following the belief if you're practicing right. the chants yogi then right. that's obviously kind of bad but if you're literally just stretching i mean you know <laughs> stretching God, God, that's that. you, like stretching is not sinful um you know <laughs> kind of like if I'm it is if, weights you know it that is if you're stretching in front of a, someone other than your to, wife naked oh my gosh <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clarifying, Jared. That is true. Check out these but hamstrings. Like this, this reply is just like <laughs> every pose has a meaning. It is a form of worship into God. Why would we uh, want that, to do this? That's almost the same level. Your of body like, had uh, flexibility thresholds the, before those gods existed. It's also the same, uh, the same logic behind like uh, 
Oh my gosh, what? Oh, the the lady who <laughs> the lady was on fate or on YouTube like. Grand. <laughs> Like yeah, well, so piss me off. Guess what? This uh, this monster energy. Dr I'm literally drinking a monster right now. By the way, I didn't even think about that. This monster energy drink. <laughs> yes, it may have been made by pagans or whatever. Like the company itself could be that. But guess what? I don't care because it's not doing anything to my body. It's the ultra. These. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. It's not like I'm sacrificing a child every time I pop the can. Like, I don't know. Well, you are, because every time you tip every, it up, there's an upside down Every time you don't cross. make a YouTube video condemning it, you're yeah. co-opting with the devil. <sighs> I really wish that there were more people on the mission that I'm on, because I can't find any any missions that are currently happening for it. I'm guessing it's because everyone's at the same point I am, where it's so miserable to try and do it. But they're like, eh, we'll wait. That's because no one loves you. <laughs> so, the trees is for crafting weapons. I know, I'm glad I know how to do it, but it's also kind of stupid, because I don't understand why I need to have a Jagras blade to make an Anjanath blade. Like, why can't I just make an Because they're forged from the same materials. Yeah, that's dumb. You're dumb. Made from Don't talk bad about Why my do I have to... <laughs> Hey, when do you, like, you ever to... get dragon or sorry, Ace? Dragonite? I don't know. Dragon Yeah. I've only got it once. Uh you thing? you unlock it later, it's in the coral area. I'm in the coral area, I can't find Dragonite still. Uh go up to the very so up up where you fought, um, Legiana. Up there, there's a ton of ore uh, nodes, and if you run in a circle in that Legiana's main area, there's like five nodes there, and uh, a couple of them are the Dragonite, and a couple are the the other types. There's red and blue up there. Okay. It should be between it should be between zone ten and eight. Like it's on the north side of zone eight. Yes. So how do you use a sword and shield? Because I have one. How do you block with it? Right trigger. How do you swing with it? Y and B. I'd go to the training area and just like mess around with it. That's what I have to do anytime I get a new weapon. You can also press start. You can also press start and go over to your hunter's notes. And then underneath the monster field guide is weapon controls. And you can look at all of the combos for every weapon. Nice. Yeah, man. Um. Uh -huh. Yeah, it, so it says controls, so the basics, and then it has useful combos as well. Dude, you actually are, are raging on the Facebook right now, huh? Can you hear me typing? <laughs> that is the best typing. Yes. I can hear the <laughs> anger. <laughs> well, I'm, the reason why it irritates me is because when they get into this, it's just such an awful lifestyle, right. and I know it's just turning people away from God. Right. Because, like, right. Could, you, could you imagine just living, like, trying to convince someone to live for God like that, and just being like, so God loves you, He wants you to follow Him. But remember, you need to be scared of literally everything out there and don't that do could possibly yoga. have a tie to anything yoga. that's ever been paganistic in the world. You know? Easter! I'm just kidding. So she's just like, how have you not, That's you know, kind of true. Research, how have you not researched yoga? I'm just like, I don't think Jesus gives a flying F whether I've researched yoga or not. I was stretching. I don't think Jesus is up there going, oh my god. I'm not that calling stretch. demons into my body. I recognize body. that stretch. 
to the Hindu god. I recognize that stretch, hell. and the Hindu did it one time. <laughs> Dude, you know, it's it's, you know, as soon as you go into Downward Dog, demons have a straight shot into your soul. <laughs> <laughs> through, your, through your poop shoe. <laughs> You need to post that. <laughs> the downward you dog no is a straight shot in your soul. It's, it's when you upward dog that that's when you seal upward. it. That's what it you is. You seal the deal. Yeah, that's your receiving. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then you so should immediately okay, like dude. transfer that into a talk about homose homosexuality. <laughs> <laughs> that's so not okay, dude. Hey, Jeremy, can you can you fire an SOS? Me? Yeah. Okay. I'm just loot. I'm just uh, running around trying to get cor or, or corpses. Yeah. Fire you guys fire have no guys. idea how much I want to post inappropriate things. <laughs> how do you do that? There it is. Hit Dude, you should look up every yoga pose and create a demonic reference to all of them. There you go. <laughs> You could be like, Lotus position. People have sex like that, it's terrible. Wait. <laughs> These are so funny. <laughs> One thing that sort of like weirds me out, and, and I have actually studied like a lot of other religions, not as in depth as Christianity, but you know, I've gone through, I've, I've read the, uh, on before. I've, I've studied mostly the historical aspects of Hinduism. It's not letting me mm -hmm. come to you. It's stupid. And I, I understand the concept of Buddhism. It's just... Buddhism is kind of a crap religion. I, yeah. Buddhism? What the hell is Buddhism? Buddhism. It, some people... I was gonna say, Buddhism. Buddhism. It's the worship of Buddhism. Yes. <laughs> and that's a yeah, lot better I than believe Buddhism. in the high ranking actually... member. I am a high-ranking <laughs> member. I'm a high-ranking mm -hmm. member of the Buddhism. Dude, totally, it's not a joke, I'm dude. a Buddhist. I am a Buddhist. <laughs> My but wife it's just is... like... I wonder if they understand that in saying that I don't know, like, the offense, quote-unquote, of yoga. They're saying to, like, be a Christian. You have to look towards all these things that aren't Christ. Right, right. I think it goes back to what Hayes was sort of saying earlier, where you don't have to know every, or was it Hayes? I don't know. It was one of you guys. Yeah, me. yeah you don't have to know all the counterfeits. You just have to know what the, the real thing is. <laughs> you know what you should do is just say, hey, you know what? Uh, honestly, if if that's what you feel convicted about, and the idea of doing that, doing yoga, it offends you because you know it used to be maybe, you know, related to these things, then don't do it. But no one's going to hell because they're doing yoga. Nobody's like sacrificing squirrels and and children and you know other things because they started doing yoga. Um, it doesn't have a negative impact on society. If anything, it helps people you know, reach health goals that they couldn't before. It'd be like, if, you know, if it offends you and you can't do it, don't do it. Like, don't try and convince the world that, that yoga is actually the devil incarnate. Like. That's dumb. I can't, Jeremy, I cannot find my way to you. The SOS didn't show up and then I just joined the coral place anyways and I don't see you on my map either. The sword and shield is a close-range weapon set that focuses on agility and dodging. And it's great for beginners. You on an expedition? <laughs> Dude, so many people are doing the old monster new world quest. They're arguing about it? Or just, just doing it. They're just doing that quest. Oh, so many people are doing it. I think it's that so many people are arguing. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't save. Please tell me auto saved. Uh... Mm, I have to start this quest on my own. I'll try and do it. Alright.
trying to type quietly, but yeah. Dude, I'm not offended by your typing. It reminds me of World of Warcraft. Someone's gonna be <laughs> offended by my typing. Dude, World of Warcraft is as bad as yoga, dude. <laughs> so is Harry Potter. Oh. <sighs> Hey, hey, just so you know, this is like life changing for me. Um, I let my kids, I actually watched all of the Harry Potters with my children. Nice. Well, you know that I wasn't like overly fond of them when you were in youth. Uh, I, I was like, I, you, I, didn't, you were interested. Yeah. You just didn't care. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't watch them personally because of everybody's, you know, stupid stink about it, but. Uh, I didn't watch them because I didn't care, but... It's teaching children I... real magic! <laughs> I joined your game and I didn't save beforehand, and I'm so afraid, because, like, right. I definitely have my other set of armor on now. Uh... Oh, Kyle. I don't know what I just gave I just lost. I haven't saved, like, all night. <laughs> no. Did you lose your no. stuff? You have to I redo the quest. I don't it should auto-save at certain points. Yeah, I just don't know what point that is. Any of your- it should be after every mission you complete. Should be. <laughs> Sounds like you need to do some yoga. It's true, man. It would change your whole, change your whole outlook. I'll do it. Well, yeah, I was it. just referring yeah, to it'll summon it. a demon to bring good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so messed up. You just made me drool. Like I, I was. <laughs> you made me drool because I laughed. That's not okay. <laughs> So really bad when it comes to like the VAT debate, and it is kind of random, but, but it sounds so bad because I am rather, you know, chunky, chunky but funky, but like these people are always like love yourself even though you, like no matter what your body you can, is like and I just, you, you know, can. Personally, from all the people I know, um, myself included, that if you love yourself, you're gonna you're gonna take a little better care of your body. You know, yeah, you well, like, like you can make that a bunch point. Of fast food. And... Yeah, you can make that point though. You can say, you know what? It's you can love yourself and also be knowledgeable about health and make positive choices in your life to make sure that you are not at a higher risk for health or for uh, heart disease. That's like that's hey, a see, statement that you can that make. That sounds really nice. What generally comes out is, if you loved yourself, you wouldn't be fat. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds really bad. Sound less nice. Especially coming, <laughs> especially coming from a fat person. Seems like I'm either, you know, self-hating or hypocritical. Why are you so negative? Get off this post. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to fight you, dude. I just was trying to mine. Go away from me. No! Oh. Don't eat my soul! Ah. No! Oh, I love this. Dude, I am face tanking Nergagante right now. I don't know what that means. It means that I have a pokey stick and I have a shield, and I can block all of his attacks and then hit him with the pokey stick when he's done attacking. Oh, or make the mistake of attacking too soon.
Okay, I found some blue things. Uh oh, that's a big gap. Oh, wow. Hayes, are you in my world right now? Yes, why did that not actually change my hair? <clears throat> yeah, I was in your world already. I just couldn't get to your expedition. I wasn't in your world. I was your world. <laughs> I don't even... <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. I'm, I'm at that point where I'm just kind of like, watch, 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 move, move, move. Come on. I have buzzed by the buzz. Okay. I was. I'm really glad I just used that health potion just so I could get hit again. My girlfriend's pretty great because I like am terrible at remembering mm, like the little good. things like names and dates and stuff like that. More of you know for remembering like physical constants and chemical reactions, you know, yeah, fun stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's just like she texted me to remind me that it's my mom's birthday, which I had no clue it was. I know somewhere around Tomorrow this Tomorrow is or today is? Well, I mean, depends on what time zone you're in. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, pretty much today, because it's, you know, one twenty-three in the morning here. Alright, so I died zone? once, so I'm, uh... Start that over. What, what zones did you say? The... North side of 8. 8. Yeah. Wait, sorry. Oh. What's up? I'm just trying to find a way to get to Jeremy. I don't... No, it's not letting me. It has expression. Dude, I can I bounce out of this and no. Oh, don't don't worry about that. Do your thing. I'm, I just need to get the stupid dragon ore. Dude, uh, go to the map and pick on, uh, and then press your right stick on me, and it'll, your scouts will bring you to me. No, that's not what I'm saying. You don't show up on my map. Like I don't end up in the same. That's uh, very strange. Dude. I, I can only think of one explanation for why this would happen. Shut up, Mitchell. <laughs> so, Jeremy, you're in the Coral Highlands, right? Right. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. And what camp? You're, by the, you're gonna be by the Northeast Camp? Dude, I got a group of dudes riding on a, on a, Oh, they're bad guys! Shut Oh, I saw them. Out. They're like little. Are they cats or? Yeah. Is somebody yeah. Riding those things. I'm killing them. <clears throat> you attacked me, you little sucker. Kid killer. But um, so I have to make it extra, extra. I have a just a bad word. Um, when I say that to you that the game hates you haze ever since you know paying you back for your life <laughs> i don't remember how it started i just remember that it exists wait paying me back for my wife was that the other day that was the other day i vaguely re i remember both of you laughing at me no 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 both of you guys were laughing at me because I couldn't find the uh, what you call it thing, the thing I was the monster I was supposed to be killing. It legit took me like thirty minutes, so I ran out of time, and she couldn't even get it out. She was laughing so damn hard, and she finally gets it out. That is because the game hates me, and I'm just like, no, that's my thing. Oh my gosh, cat, what the actual fuck? 
Yeah, I don't see you on the map. That's so dumb. Uh, dude, yeah, I had a dude yeah. join me. I had a dude join me on my huh? SOS. Somehow a dude joined me yeah. on my SOS. Yeah, they fixed matchmaking finally. Yeah, a random um, can join you, unless you set a passcode. I still don't know how they join me, because every time I try to do matchmaking, it still doesn't work. Um, you gotta kinda add some specifics. I just did it. Um, I searched for, like, the quest I was on, and there's, like, 50 different, uh, servers where people are doing this, but in our server, no one was doing it. So I couldn't find it when I originally just looked for a search for SOS. Uh, Chad, these, these conversations are fun. We should have them, you know, pretty regularly, like, once a week, maybe. Instead of walking like out to the open parts of the room, it'll walk like between the back of the dresser and the wall, like under stuff. And so it's just like hilarious because it'll get itself not really stuck, but somewhat stuck, and you'll just feel like the scraping of it, you know. I think that's sort of just like fog to help. That's like that crap, dude. This cat's just so, like, obviously skittish. Sometimes. About me? Uh, about anyone. No, not old. When person. they say they're tired. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah. 